Hello everyone, the apron is on because I was doing some oil painting, which is lovely, just doing something a little bit different. And tonight I am decided and I am determined to finish this watercolour painting. Tonight I'm going to add in some of the bespoke uh, Derwent Inktense pencils that I got um, a number of weeks ago. So come with me and let's get this one finished. Okay, so here we are. I've got my Derwent Egg Tents. I have got the set here that is a 24 set. And I've also got, because I know that I'll need some of the different colours and things for the bluebells. And then I have that more bespoke set that I had got um, from uh, Derwent Ink Tents, the actual company. So anyway, let's, let's begin to make a start. I'm going to move these around a little bit. So what I'm using here, I'll try and remember to tell you all of the different colours. This is beach green. So we're going to take some of this beach green. In. And one of the things that I'm really looking forward to is how the pencil marks are going to start to change this one. I think that um, I feel like I have had it's had so much time really on the layering up and I think we're on layer we had one two three four so this is now layer five we are looking to really develop this now what I'm going to do is keep as I'm talking just keep the the pencil moving in that kind of dancing <laughs> manner that I that I like to use, it keeps it nice and fresh. I would really love to hear your feedback about this episode. I don't know whether it actually has become quite sort of laboursome um, doing this for the, those of you who are watching. Um, it's been it's been good going through the process. <laughs> he says, it's been good. It has been good going through the process. I am a starter finisher, result oriented individual, and therefore I have got to the place with this now where I am decided and determined, as I have said before, to get this done. So today is going to be the last episode of this. Now I'm going to switch now just to, let me see, I'm going to go to Willow, moving this to the, to the Willow to be able to get in some of these tones of the um, branches and things that are coming through. Now this sort of detail has been missing up until this point and has just been present in some of the line work that I had done from before. So it's actually really, really satisfying. Um, you know, adding some of this in and also adding it in in a nice free pencil mark. You know, this kind of illustrated style as well is lovely for me to be able to add in on that. So um, we're going to join up some of the dots here just of the of the branches and things and keep this nice and fluid. And I, I love this kind of, if you notice when I'm drawing at times, I roll the pencil around as I'm moving it and, and therefore it means that it's not getting as blunt in, in in as many places at the one time if that makes sense. So that's a technique that I, I use for doing that and just moving to this tree trunk on this side here. Okay so I'm going to get in some Payne's Grey on this one just to add in to get a little bit of the, the darker colour along there and probably there's some Payne's Grey present in some different places now. The other thing I want to do is in this rich undergrowth here there is there's more bark and things happening and it's much much darker under here. This is actually lovely doing the pencil work in this. I am um, in the last one that I did the toasting marshmallows one if you haven't seen that episode where I was really thinking do I want to add in watercolor pencil is this going to add anything whereas interestingly with this one I was really very excited to add in the the Durand Ink Tense and just as I'm doing it it really is a real joy to me to be doing that so let's um go back into the let me get my trusty sharpener although this sort of bluntness is actually working quite well just to cover some more of those sort of darker areas so this is could you call this effectively as mixed media? It depends on which side of the fence you're on in regard to these being watercolour pencils. I know that there's some debate about this. I think they are pencils that the pigment is really released when the water adds. So therefore, for me, they're watercolour pencils, but totally respect that for some others, they're not. Um, they have a different um, sort of designation for, for things like that. Um, but for me, um, I just love the way these things work and... 
it's just really enjoyable using them in this one. I'm just going to give this a wee. This is the best sharpener that I've used. You've heard me talk about it before, the Faber Castell one. Just giving it a bit of a sharpen. It always gets it to a lovely point. There's going to be some areas that are out here. I mean, that's just lovely. Just noticing, letting, letting the pencil, this is where the kind of continuous line I find so interesting. Just works so well for um, bringing in detail. Let's switch this up a bit and go now to olivine. Leaning at different points. It's actually quite a um, kind of a matte effect, the olivine in some areas here. But it's really going to bulk up the foreground here and let me, you know, even draw on the line of the, the stalks down with that. It's just so satisfying and lovely to do. Now, we don't, don't want to overdo this, and it's the whole learning when to stop. Now, the other thing I want to do is get there's some apple green, which will be, let's see, how, oh, there we go. That's lovely and bright. Let's just be careful how much of this we actually use. Actually, it's going to work really well in some of those much lighter tones that are coming through. Now, some of this, I, I quite deliberately want to leave these pencil marks because I don't want it all to fade away. If I wanted it to be just solid watercolor, then I would be using just watercolor. I am not using watercolor pencil as a substitute for watercolor because it's going to give me very different coverage. And that's part of what I'm looking for. Okay, just sort of dancing this around, trying to notice some places where it is, where it isn't. Okay, let's go to this is Sicilian yellow. That's a little bit too bright for me. Let's go then to tan. Okay, let's see what tan's gonna do. Tan might add in. Let's actually amber. Let's try. Well, the amber's actually better for trying to get the details on the. I haven't really quite found what I'm what I'm looking for here yet with the. the sense of the detail that I want to go for to try and give that a uh, kind of sense of light. Let's take some of the, I think that's, that's too, oh, do you know what? That's a good colour there. Let's go with the Sienna Gold. See what it's going to do. I would say it'll cause a minor explosion in regard to the, the colours, but I want to be really careful how I do that. So let's go back to the apple green and rely on it to bring some of that lightness. I'm going to put it right beside there. I'm not sure how effectively I've really sort of captured those areas of light. Um, but we just want to keep this moving. So that's sort of a mix mash of different directions and colors along here. And let's go back then to the light olive. I'm just really trying, sorry if my head was obscuring there. Um, just really trying to build up that sense of depth with um, all of these stocks and all this business going on here. And then also with, I'll be using a flat edge brush to really try and capture some of those um, stocks and things. Okay, now let me see. Yes, let's get get this much darker here because there is an awful lot of darkness in that 
growth there. Okay. Go back to this olivine. I really want to try and build this up. Okay, now to the bluebells. Cool, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick these two colors. We've got violet and we have got iris blue. So this, oh, should be quite interesting as the, the depth that it's gonna bring and it should really make, the ones, you know, it's interesting, the ones that are closer to you, obviously you can see, or it feels like to me that you can see more of that blue sort of a tone whereas the ones that are further away they just look completely purple unless they're more in the shade so that's interesting as well and obviously I can create a greater sense of um, depth with these and this, this one here very noticeably has the blue in it as well and just that's that nice one sort of heading up this way also get this one down here. Okay, now then let's try this violet. Let's see what this violet's gonna do. I would say the violet will be really impressive and will begin to kind of explode when we add a little bit of color onto this. The color that I have here is um, fuchsia. Now it's really, really, um, ready kind of a tone and so i don't know whether i want to go there and try that. i might try that just for a little bit of the some of the shadows you know so really again using this sort of dancing um pencil technique keep it moving and it's got really lovely and free and that kind of a scratchy sort of feel to it now i don't know whether you like that or not but it's certainly something that i enjoy it does change it from being the, that normal style of watercolor to something other and i think that i love that it's a real bit of a leap of not a bit it's a leap of faith to to move it to that place and i i like that i like that there's risk involved with it i like especially you know doing this live you know this is not premeditated apart from just the normal process of considering Okay, so let's see. Okay, so what I want to do now is take the water and begin to play. Let's see where this goes, what this ends up doing now. This is going to really change things. And also remember, this is where you remember some of the colors that you've laid down as well. And they totally change the more that you, you know, the more you agitate them. This is where you really can tell the, the ink based and the effect that the water has when it's added and the, the addition that it, that it really does make. Not, I mean, that, that color is really quite electric there. And then you've got those more olivine sort of base, base colors, the likes of these ones. They're going really, really light on me, which is totally fine. I'm gonna take some of that Payne's Gray from down here. The Payne's Gray, you can see, is really, you just lift some of it. There it is, you're, you're able to, to flick that across and move that. Now, we've got these, the olivines down here and that lovely kind of a matte finish. So if I'm just going to, really what I'm looking to do is to, to get the pigment and to lift the pigment and then move it around. The thing that I'm loving about this is the almost Quentin Blake. I love Quentin Blake and, and that sort of a scratchy feel to it and something that's not perfect and capturing hopefully somewhat of the feel of this being in this bluebell forest and the, the plethora of stalks and leaves and bluebells and
this one really has gone very very differently to others that i've done and the addition of the watercolor pencil has really changed it now let's just begin to let these kind of collide together now the lovely thing is that we really are getting the vibrancy now of the bluebell which was so hard to i just couldn't get it without these without the intense pencils and the the vibrancy of that blue that that we've just recently added i want to lift some of that flick that across Let's see, now we're looking to see where we've actually, and then there's the, there's the purple. Sorry if my head is obscuring again. Lifting those, those purple marks. And like all these things, the more that you look at it and delve into it, the more you're going to see the colours that you're... Or the, not the colours, sorry, the pencil marks that you haven't agitated yet or activated. Bringing those things in. And you can tell that the more that you do that, the more confidence you have to do that. And also letting them mix. You know, those greens together and... Just making uh, quite more of a difference. And now the other thing that I want to do is to soften this off just ever so slightly. I still want the, I still very much want the pencil marks, but I don't want them to be just so pronounced. Maybe in some certain areas, but not, not through throughout the entire thing. So just moving this around a little bit more. Now let's see, is there anywhere else and anything else that we want to do. And I think just for those stalks in the middle here. But that blue is just absolutely wonderful. Now can we lift it ever so slightly more? Just squeezing off, just squeezed off the excess water there from the brush. Very conscious that my head is like recovering over everyone. Just lifting a little bit of this purple now, dropping it over on this side. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that we are going to call it a day with this painting. We have gone through quite a process from the drawing with the Indian ink and the dip pen to the adding the first layer and those those little bits of the, the blue that are just really, really subtle to building up this background and keeping... I'm really quite pleased with how this tree just sort of helps frame it a bit to really try to figure out how on earth I get these these bluebells to pop and really achieved that with the... or, in, you know, my own mind achieved that a little bit more with the Derwent Inktense pencils. And then this um, giving you the impression of the busyness of all of the, the the greenery that surrounds all of these bluebells. It's really quite a different type of painting for me. Um, I am pleased with it and I think it's got some life to it. So really interested to hear what your thoughts are. So that's it. We are actually finished this piece. Five episodes later, we have moved through all of the stages and lots of decision-making processes. The addition of the Derwent Intense watercolour pencils for me has probably been one of the best bits of this. And giving this sort of spontaneous, loosey-goosey, almost scratchy kind of feel to the, to the painting really adds something to it for me. It's been really interesting going through this process. 
It's been really good to have you on board as I've been going through this process and I'm really interested to hear your comments about this. You may think, oh, that doesn't work for me at all, but hopefully the description of the process and taking it step by step, moving through these little almost 15 minute videos just to get to the conclusion, hopefully you have found this beneficial. Thank you so much as always for watching these videos. It means a lot. I really appreciate your comments and do like and subscribe and share. And any suggestions you have for further videos, any other things you'd like to see, questions you'd like answered, just get in touch. And that's it from me on the Bluebell Forest. Bye for now.